All right, in this video, we are going to speed run through marble slides here. So marble slides, great game where you've got little marbles and you're building slides with your graphs. You're trying to collect all the stars. All right, so let's see how quickly I can go through this. So when I look at this, I can see that I've got kind of the right wave, but it's not tall enough. So I'm going to change the two to a four, not quite to a five, and then it looks like I'm gonna get all the stars there. So the number in front of your function is your amplitude, making it taller or shorter. Here, I think that the trick is that my waves are too tight together. So I'm gonna change the five to a two. When I have a bigger number inside here, that makes it more frequent of the wiggles. So the bigger the number, the tighter together that your uh, function is, the smaller the number, the further apart they are. So two didn't actually work. I wonder, 2.5. A two would work. Let's give it one more shot because it looks like I'm hitting all the stars with my graph. There we go. Sometimes those marbles are a little weird. All right, here I can tell my function is too low. The midline is down here at negative two. So I'm going to move the midline up to positive three, maybe positive four. And then over here in the squiggle brackets is a domain restriction. It's a cut on my function. So I'm trying it at x equals zero. Okay, oops, they kind of fell off the edge. Let's try x equals negative one to give it a little bit more of a ramp. Bueno. Let's see what's next. Change one number to fix it. The pi over 5 is a shifting number. If I change that number to something different like 2 pi over 5 or 3 pi over 5, we might be able to get it with this here. So notice that as I changed that number inside the parentheses, it shifted the graph left and right. And so that was able, that's how I was able to move my ramp to where the stars are going. Changing the 2 to a 5 here would make it taller. 2 is the amplitude. Changing it to a 5 would make it that much taller. Instead of going 2 steps above the midline, it goes 5 steps above the midline. Here, just like I said, changing the 2 to a 5 makes it that much taller. If we change the 1 over here to a negative 1, what would happen? Well, positive 1 is the midline of the graph. y equals 1 is the middle. Shifting it to negative one moves it down by two steps. Yeah, you can see for yourself. Didn't change the wavelength, didn't change the amplitude, just shifted it vertically two steps down. Changing the three to a one would change the frequency. Right here, we've got a frequency of three, which means it does three full revolutions by the time it gets to two pi. If I change it to one, now it's only going to do one revolution by the time it gets to 2 pi. You can trace it out yourself. Middle, bottom, middle, top, middle. Versus the dotted line does that three times. All right, let's see if I can get through these last ones here. This one to me looks like a sine graph. Looks like I need to make it four times taller. Looks like I need to stretch it out by 0.5. Let's make it a little smaller. Should do it. Ah, eh, 0.3, maybe not. Maybe point three five. That looks big. Let's see if that gets there. There we go. Here it looks again like I could do a sine graph. I probably have to shift it down by two. Let's flip it over. And that looks pretty good. Maybe I need to mess with the frequency a little bit. Can I get it done? Let's see. There we go. Now this looks weird. Um, interesting. Let's try a cosine graph here. Let's try making it uh, big. Let's try shifting it down. Let's try stretching it out a bit. See if that gets it done. I don't know if that's going to get it done. It's going to kind of... Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. This one... Uh, I'm not sure. What should I use here? What's a little tricky here is 
I'm not sure how I'm going to get them to split like that. Let's see. I might need to do like, I might need to get fancy with this one. Let's do a cosine X. Maybe I can do something like this. Cosine X plus five. How am I going to get those? Interesting. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see if I can get, get kind of weird with it. I'm trying to build kind of uh, one function like that, and then I'm going to get a ramp underneath it. Let's see. Maybe it's maybe it's better as a cosine x plus two. Let's just see what happens with this. I don't know if this is going to work. They really they all went to the left. That's so funny. I didn't think they'd all go to the left like that. Okay, let's try again. Do they always go to the left? How do I get them to split on either side of it? Maybe I need to do... Let's see if this works. They all go to the left. Interesting. Ooh, I might be stumped on this one. I might be stumped on this one. Because I want it to split. Let's go x plus 0 0.01. See if that does anything for me. Huh. So that one, now they all go to the right. I wanted to go something in between that. I think I might be stumped on this one on how to get it to split down the middle, but I like my idea anyway. I'm going to leave it. Let's see if I can get one more and then we'll call it, call it a day. So let's say I had y equals sine x plus 8. Let's make that bigger. Let's try times 4. it a little bit wider. Yeah, that's not going to work. Okay, so I think that what we're realizing is it's going to take a little bit more work than I'm willing to do in this video here. Uh, but I hope you got a little bit of a sense of how you can at least start moving your graphs around and making them do different interesting things. And if you want me to do a particular slide, just let me know and I will figure it out for you.